and welcome to Banking Frontiers Live. This is one of the very interesting and forward-looking conversation on technology trendsetters. Along with me today, we have Mr. Saurabh Chatterjee, who is heading technology and business transformation, as well as the PL responsibility for digital and travel business at Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. Saurabh, welcome to Banking Frontier Slide. Thank you, Abu, and it is great to be here and talking to you. I look forward to the conversation. Thank you very much. So, uh, Saurabh, how has the journey been and what is the difference now you see from this transformation in your career? When I look back at my own journey, right, uh, at least the biggest difference is at least I could complain about things in my earlier role. You know, when you are an actually a techie and you know, again, not being a CIO is a very big role, CIO, CTO. Uh, but at least I could say, you know, the business is not doing this or whatever capability I have created is not getting utilized or adopted because of, you know, X, Y, Z reason. Now, when you actually uh, in this current role, I have to conceptualize, I have to create, I have to implement. I have to sell and I have to service and therefore I cannot complain. You know? So in this role, the entire thing is the good, good part is that you own the uh, end-to-end sort, of, uh, sort of the life cycle of that capability that you have created. Whether you can take any part of the insurance value chain or banking value chain or anything in the BFSI. When you own the end-to-end uh, uh, portions of that, then you cannot complain. It puts a lot of responsibility, but it also gives you a lot of freedom to experiment. It gives you a lot of a lot of ability to innovate and challenge the status quo. And I've always believed in that, right? The higher the risk, because it, it's a regulated industry. There are set ways of doing things. But this has been my my you know biggest learning and biggest change that I cannot complain to anyone now. It's 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 uh, you know it's mine. Of course, you work with the different parts of the organization and different stakeholders, internal and external. This is always a collaboration. But that has been the change. Yeah. So, how have you been looking at this scaling up of most of these innovations and transformation activities that you have done? What is uh, your experience there? See, my uh, you know what couple of things I would say we have learned along the way, and I've learned one. These are not technology initiatives or technology capabilities. We have to remember that fundamentally. These have to be directly correlated day one, whenever you're thinking about them to a business outcome. You need to have a sponsor on the business side. You need to have a, the ability of managing change and mindsets within the organization. The tech capability piece is a given. It will work and there will be some issues, right? But unless the end outcome is very, very clear, uh, you will never be able to scale that POC or pilot or prototype, whatever you may call it. And we have kept this in mind right from day one, whether it is uh, creating, I'll give you an example, which uh, we created, you would have heard about it uh, earlier. We worked with a company called uh, yellow.ai on creating our bot, right? It is called Boeing. And I'm sure you would have heard about it before, but this was even before the pandemic, right? 1819. And we created those capabilities. We added some 2023 different services uh, and then launched it. Obviously, that op adoption was, you know, an X percentage. And then COVID hit us. Right? During that time, the entire uh, percentage of, uh, of adoption of these capabilities that created went up to around 80, 70, 80%. Right? So you can imagine that there was a timing, but we kept the end goal in mind right from day one. COVID happened to be the booster shot that actually provided us that. But uh, look at it, a large enterprise with seven and a half crore customers creating a capability and then keeping it ready, but with an objective that if the self-service percentage does not cause an X amount of threshold, we will never call it a success. Right? For us, that innovation at scale was a, was a driver for us. And therefore, the end outcome actually helped us. And that obviously helped us reduce our uh, servicing costs that helped us creating those uh, during COVID times. That was the only way people could, you know, reach out because even the call centers uh, started being empty. Right. So the end objective, the business outcome is very, very important and having a business sponsor is very important, I would say. So you have to ultimately put business in front of technology. And then when you are looking at scalability, the other thing is scalability vis-a-vis -vis the cost vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, you know, various other factors like reliability and various other things, there is quite often a dilemma. Yeah. Ultimately, you have to make choices in life. 
okay which has to work within your budgets within the framework of your business requirements within the uh, reliability and success factor how do you solve these kind of dilemmas generally when they come to you yeah, look i see from a from a large enterprise standpoint i don't think there is a one solution fit all kind of an approach right Correct. so when we look at uh, you know some certain things like um, you know like our, as i said right the consumer layer right whether it is our bots whether our apis you know some of those you can isolate it and you can obviously do things at scale but still isolate the entire enterprise in a different way but when it comes to say my core policy admin platform right we were the first ones to take a bet on taking our uh, you know core policy admin to public cloud no bank no insurance company in 17 18 actually wanted to do that we did that because we realized that unless you strengthen the core right whatever you do will have its limits right so when you talk about some of those fundamental aspects there there is no compromise on reliability and security and you know you yeah. may actually compromise a little bit on you know on the agility and a forward looking features because this is your core right your system of record your you know but some of the consumer side innovation that we have done and things that they have done there i guess agility is more important because you are experimenting right you are going along with the times the consumers are demanding it there even if you know you you tend to work on the reliability side of far more of course it's an enterprise setting so you have to be reliable right you can't compromise on some of those factors but as you said it's a choice it's a balance right you have to start with things which may not be 100% reliable may not be you know to to an extent you know the same but you have to experiment with them over a period of time as you scale you have to either make these the same set of capabilities more reliable and move into that predictable zone or you have to find alternate or you know options or solutions for it but if you want things on day one right on some of these new new aspects you know uh, are all working with insurtechs and printtechs you will never be able to uh, you know get something which is perfect so it's a it's a trade off uh, between things which are in the zone of your core and you cannot compromise on these things you know no matter what there you have to almost you know uh, be very very sure of things as you even get off the block and there are things where you can experiment one of the most interesting or or common things that you can see is every vendor wants to lock in his customer uh, mm-hmm. for a particular point in time at the same time the customer wants to have that freedom so that he can experiment with things outside and uh, at the same time have uh, a strong service and a strong commitment from the vendor also yeah. how do cios generally have to look at these things how to maintain a balance in this like see we look at it and i have always looked at it from a uh, again tying it to a long term objective of the organization and where you want to go so the way to de risk again you know as as and, and to avoid lock in you can't avoid it you it will be in some sort of a way you know a, a, a lock in will happen whether we like it or not but then you have to be flexible and you have to have the partnership to be able to uh, you know um, uh, exit or to be able to put your eggs in certain baskets and de-risk in certain other areas right and that's that's an ongoing journey i don't think we can say that we did in 17 we didn't do it in 19 we are again doing it in 22 right now we are talking about you know in the cloud we put our data lake right because my analytics team uh, the data science team needed a a uh, uh, sort of a workbench right uh, to be able to uh, uh, experiment so we gave them everything on a data lake right so it was earlier mars then warehouse then data lake now we are talking about a lake house architecture right with everything coming together with transactional data and everything from outside it is a journey again we are in the same space wherein we are talking to our csps and saying who could be a strategic partner in this journey and who could be the primary who could be the secondary so that we can de-risk ourselves So in short i think don't think uh, the the lock in you can always avoid but if you think through it right up front before you make the investment and have a sort of a road map it is possible to de risk and have an exit strategy uh, you know if for any reason you have to do it won't be easy it won't be you know uh, uh, you know and it will get difficult as you put more and more things on it but at least have that approach in hand uh, in hand and have those relationships in place so that you can do it at any given point absolutely so what are those futuristic technologies which you think are going to make a mark in the near future 
which organization should really look at today? There are four or five things, five things I would say, which are the bedrocks of the entire thing that, you know, technology landscape. So we believe that um, uh, our core has to be strong. We did that, uh, the, the capability we brought in, you know, we bought that product and still in the process of, you know, of taking it live, we've already taken some 30, 40% of, of that live. But we believe that fundamentally our core has to be far more flexible, far more configurable, far more being able to be modular, right? Because the customers are demanding it and the partners are demanding. So one is that core policy admin platform. Second, we believe cloud. I think I talked about that, right? As the as the the third, I said about the microservices architecture and the APIs, right? That is the whole set of uh, the fourth, the overarching thing of all of this, right? Is around the obviously the cybersecurity and security aspect. But the most important thing, which I think believe uh, the tech that will drive the future enterprise, um, again, without using the technology specific terms, would be data and insights. I'm repeating that it's data and insights generated at scale at every point of sale and every point of service for all of our stakeholders. Now, this is an interesting. So this, this is a wide, you know, encompassing statement. You know, you can talk about uh, here, the data lake plays a role, the, the data engineering, the data science teams plays a role, obviously AI ML plays a role. You take parts of it in the insurance industry, a lot of, you know, IoT is coming in, right? A uh, lot of uh, like the wearables with health tech, right? Or, you know, or, or a lot of sensors with the home insurance piece, which is still not being in India. Or you're talking about the, the entire ecosystem aspect, right? Which is coming in with both health and motor and others like what has happened in uh, with Pingan and others in China. It's, hap it's going to happen in India. The health, we are already seeing that, right? But the interesting thing is the vast amount of data which is lying within the organization and a lot of, you know, the, uh, data which is outside the organization, how do we harness that to be able to create the right products, give personalized services, and do it at scale repeatedly over a period of time? So these data and insights have to be generated and created and poured, you know, put in real time. Right, and this is where the lot of work will happen. I think there are this. This includes the interesting, uh, you know, tech aspects of ML, DL, uh, you know, all those sorts of models that are that are getting created. This will include even simple things of decision making that are given to that last mile, that you know, that point of sale and service. Unless I improve my experience by providing that with data and insights, right? How will that happen? It will also include a lot of ecosystem kind of models. Right? What I mean by ecosystem kind of models is in our, uh, you know, e-com business and other other businesses, we are seeing that we do have a lot of asset side data, underwriting, risk pricing side data. But whereas the partners that we are working with have a lot of consumer side data, right? Can we marry the two right together and provide the right product, right service again at that point of scale, you know, point of sale and point of service. So data and insights at scale is the most interesting tech uh, that will uh, evolve over the next, uh, I would say, three to five years. This is not just true for insurance. This is true for banking. This is true for entire BFSI. This is true for all consumer internet or any other industry right, coming together. So that's what I, I believe, right? And all these technologies will help. Right? Data and insights will be driven by everything. So you know, um, all, the, all the buzzwords that are out there. But finally, usage and deploying it at scale will matter. All these things happening uh, and at the helm of affairs of technology and that p and uh, you know, uh, leadership that you are in, how do you see the change or what kind of new skills are now required by a head of technology or a head of business uh, to basically transition to this new era now? The skill set that you need is basic analytical capability, ability to learn fast and ability to unlearn. I think that has become far, far more prominent today because what you know today, right? I acquired a skill set myself, right, uh, of Python, right? I, I realized, you know, all these data science guys do, you know, all my data engineering guys are learning this language. Let me learn it on my own, right? I did a course on my own and actually, you know, on, on, uh, you know, on the internet. But I, what, what I realized is the basics have not changed, right? Which is the basics of coding, basics of analytical uh, ability, basics of pseudo code, you know, looking at logic, right? Therefore, 
having a high ability to adapt and change and learn new things on a day to day basis and second unlearn because some of the foundational things uh, you know are getting challenged but what i've realized is those paradigms you have to be ready to unlearn and relearn very fast as long as you are able to do that any skill set is you know is 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 possible the second thing i always believe in is if you are a good um, you know if you are good at one thing or the or the second thing you know you have two choices either be become an expert in that right go deeper or you go wider and so we we look at our talent also that way right we either say that you know you can be more more across the landscape or then or you be an expert in one thing right because over a period of time even that expert may have to shift slightly but then at least you are an expert in you know for the next 3 years or 5 years kind of thing so that's how these are the two ways we are looking at um, this thing and we are doing a lot of reskilling a lot of upskilling uh, i i i upskill myself i tell my team that you know for me to be relevant to you right even if i am providing 5% value to you in the conversation and in every every interaction that i have with my team i have to constantly upskill myself right i can't say that you know i have created in the hierarchy i am at this role or xyz and i don't have to learn i have to learn every day because i'll not be relevant tomorrow you know and and that is what as long as that those that's the that's what i feel it's back to basics there's no rocket science i think that's that's hard thank you so about. much uh, for this wonderful uh, conversation and we look forward to more such uh, interesting conversations with you sir uh, absolutely thank you so much for uh, for inviting me and i love the opportunity to interact with you and and everyone who is listening to this thanks thank, thank you, you. 